right now, I am in the Polish city of Szymyszow. And uh, this is a city that has served as kind of a crossroads uh, between Western and Eastern Europe for hundreds of years. It sits right here on, on the Saan River, kind of straddles it. And uh, with being a crossroads, it has also been a site of a lot of terrible violence. In September of 1914, uh, this city was part of the Austro-Hungarian Empire and uh, was under siege uh, by the Russians. It was the longest siege of World War I. Uh, the, the Russians took it in uh, March of 1915, and then the Germans took it back later uh, that year. Whenever World War II rolled around, the, the Germans, uh, under Nazi rule, tore through this city. And then in 1944, uh, Soviets came rolling back through. So this is a city that has seen a lot of violence. And my son and I have been doing some work over on the Ukrainian and Polish border. And we left a little bit early today so that we could come and do a little bit of exploring in a cemetery that reflects some of the complications and violence and bloodshed that has occurred right here in this part of Eastern Europe. Well, uh, we just got here to the cemetery here in Shimashil. And I've never been in a place like this. I I'm trying to find the right words to describe how this feels. It's, it's old, uh, it's, it's dark, it's haunting. Uh, again, I'm, I'm, I'm struggling to come up with the way to, to, to describe this place, but it almost feels like I don't know, like I'm in Middle Earth or, or in something from Lord of the Rings. Uh, th this just has a completely different vibe and completely different feel from any place that I've ever been. Uh, so anyway, like I said, there's a lot here that, that reflects the, the violence and the bloodshed that has taken place here over the years. Uh, so we're going to do a, a little bit of exploring here in the cemetery. Well, I mentioned that Szymyszyl was part of the Austro-Hungarian Empire. Uh, the, the city itself was kind of in the northeast region of Austria-Hungary whenever World War I broke out. And as I mentioned, the longest siege of World War I took place in this city. And at the very onset of the war, uh, well, really throughout the war, to be honest, uh, the Austro-Hungarian army was uh, not awesome. Uh, they were poorly trained, they were poorly equipped, and right at the beginning the Russians just rolled over them and they suffered just an unbelievable number of casualties. Well, right here is a cemetery that holds the remains of some of those Austro-Hungarian soldiers. Now, to be honest, I don't know how many are in here, and this one is a little bit different from any other cemetery that I've been to because there aren't individually marked graves, I'm noticing. You can see these black crosses, but uh, it would appear that this is just one large mass grave. But yeah, this is the Austro-Hungarian War Cemetery in Shimashil. This right here is the only marker in this entire Austro-Hungarian War Cemetery that has a name on it. So it, it is unique. And I don't know if there's anything about this person that, that stands out. I'll have to just take a look later. And his name, oh man, it's gonna be hard for me to pronounce. 
Zizakeli Karoli is how I'm going to try to say it. And it looks like he may have died December 3rd of 1914. So that would have been uh, right in the middle of the siege of, of Shemeshil. But uh, yeah, this marker certainly stands out amongst all of the others here. We have some other parts of the cemetery that we're going to be visiting, but real quick, I just want to point out the density of the graves here. I'm used to going to, you know, American cemeteries where, you know, everything is, is pretty well laid out in, in rows and plots to where you can easily find different graves. This would be <laughs> quite the chore if uh, you were trying to find an individual grave. Another interesting one right there. Okay, I'm gonna move on to another uh, World War I section of the cemetery. Okay, now I mentioned that the largest siege of World War I took place right here in this city. Uh, the Russians laid siege to Shemeshil in September of 1914. Uh, it, it you know, they tried to, uh, Austro-Hungarians kind of relieved them for a little bit and then the Russians took it back. Long story short, the, the siege lasted until late March of 1915, whenever the Russians took it over. Well then, there was a big counter-offensive that was launched and the Germans moved through and ended up taking back this fortress city. So right up ahead is another World War I cemetery that holds the remains of the German soldiers who fought and died here. Well, you can see on this gate a couple of iron crosses. So it's reasonable to assume that we are at the German World War I cemetery. And I'm not exactly sure what that says. Deutschland Helde Frona. So I may have to translate that later. But uh, we'll go ahead and walk on up here. And wow, a little bit different than what we saw at the Austro-Hungarian cemetery, but I'm assuming that it's the same thing, that we're looking at a mass grave here. So again, here at the, the top of the cemetery, uh, we see the German Iron Cross with the date 1914 on it. And then all along here are these crosses. Going to all of these different cemeteries has, has really been a fascinating experience to me because they are all so different. Um, so this is the first German cemetery from World War I that I've been to. And uh, yeah, the crosses here are certainly unique. So this holds the remains of all of those guys that fought and died in that brutal conflict in 1915. Interesting. Now, the bloodshed in this region wouldn't stop with World War I. In September of 1939, Nazi Germany launched something that was codenamed Fall Weiss, or, or Case White, which was the invasion of Poland. And they, they reached the area of Szymszyl around September 11th of 1939. Uh, it took them a few days to, to take the city, but eventually did. And what happened to the Jewish population here as a result was uh, nothing short of catastrophic.
what we are looking at here is the mass grave of 102 Jewish individuals who were murdered by the Nazis upon their occupation of Shemeshil. And if we go over here, they have a memorial set up. And uh, fortunately for me, they've written some of it in English. It says, on September 17th, 18th, and 19th in the year 1939, barbarian Nazis murdered 102 Jews who are resting here. May they be at peace and their names forever honored. And then down here, uh, it says, erected in the year 2000 by Frederick Salzburg in memory of his father, Hermann Salzburg, and brother Julius Salzburg, and all Jewish martyrs. Now, a lot of these stones are either uh, unmarked or they're faded uh, or, or written in a language that, that I don't know. Uh, there are some that have either been updated or replaced or are written in some language that I, I can make out. So here's one for Hermann and Julius Salzburg. Uh, both died September 19th of 1939. And then there were a few others that I found uh, here's one, and I think that says Nafta Finster, born 1897 and died September 19th of 1939. And then up here is another one for a Pincus Alvis and Jacob Alvis, both who died September 19th of 1939. Now, here's one more marker that I just found where it memorializes Edward, I'm going to pronounce that Kunk uh, or Kunka. Anyway, you can see that he died in September 19th of 1939. And then tragically, I'm going to assume that these are the names of his wife and child who would have remained behind but died in 1942. So, one of many families completely wiped out by Nazi barbarism. Here's yet another marked grave uh, to a Mendel Fuhrer, I think is how you would say that, born 1892 and died September 19th, 1939. Now, as, as old and as ancient as the cemetery looks, this is actually referred to as the New Jewish Cemetery. Uh, there's another one nearby that is the Old Jewish Cemetery, but nothing is there. Uh, it's just empty ground. And that is because whenever the Nazis occupied this area, they went into that cemetery and completely wiped it out, crushed all the headstones, and essentially erased any memory of any of the Jewish people who resided in this area. So they didn't want to just wipe out the Jewish people. They wanted to completely wipe out their memory as well. Now in 1939, prior to the Nazi invasion, it's estimated that there were between 20 and 24,000 Jews who were living in Shemeshil. Uh, whenever the, the Nazis occupied this area, of course, as we see right here, uh, there were, were some immediate mass executions of Jewish individuals. Uh, many of them fled uh, into the, the Soviet area. Uh, some of them ended up being uh, deported. Uh, a lot of the Jewish individuals ended up getting herded into uh, the, these ghettos uh, in, in Shemeshil. And whenever the Nazis invaded the Soviet Union in 1941, it's estimated that, that number had dropped down to 17,000. Over the period of the war, a lot of them ended up being deported to different concentration camps. And by the end of the war, when everything was all said and done, of the 17,000 that were here 
in 1941, only 300 remained. It, it's just something that, that you can't even hardly wrap your mind around. Uh, but anyway, we have uh, one more spot in the cemetery that we're going to go take a look at because not only are there victims of the Holocaust buried in this cemetery, but uh, we also have German soldiers who fought in this area who were laid to rest just right up the hill. All right, well, this is going to be our uh, last stop in the cemetery this morning, and then we've got to get to work. But uh, on the Eastern Front, there is a, a level of brutality that takes place in the fighting between the Soviets and the Germans that, that really is beyond comprehension. The, the, the bloodshed on, on this front during World War II but really, you, you can't even wrap your mind around it. And, and what we're walking into right now is a cemetery that holds the remains of a great number of those German soldiers who fought and died right here on the Eastern Front. So there's a memorial here in this cemetery and a uh, rough translation is um, in memory of the German soldiers that rest here from the war 1939 to 1945. And as you can see, we have another unique cemetery in that we don't have individually marked graves with, with the names of the soldiers on them, but rather this is one large mass grave that to the best of my understanding contains the remains of between four and 6,000 German soldiers who fought and died here in Poland. Now, here's something that is different about this cemetery. While we don't have individual graves with the names of these German soldiers on them, what we do have is a marker showing the names of many of the men who were buried here, uh, like Martin Albrecht, who died February 26th of 1943. Uh, here's another one for Franz Baltzas, who died September 24th of 1939, so that would have been in the invasion of Poland. And you can go on down and read the names of all of these guys. Here's another one. Uh, Franz Buteau, or Butau, who died May 26th of 1945. And the names just go on and on and on. And these guys are all buried here in this mass grave. doing a little walking around, I did find this individual marker for a Hermann Geerth, uh, who died September 13th of 1944. So that would have been whenever the Soviets were, were pushing back through towards Germany. This is really interesting to me. Here's a memorial that stands at the top of this cemetery. And I just walked up here and my gosh, the names of all of these soldiers just continue on and on and on. And if you go over here, again, just thousands of names of all who were laid to rest in this small, small cemetery.
Well, that uh, is certainly jarring to be here and to see the final resting place of all of these people who died in, in World War I and in World War II. I, and we didn't even show everything. There's a, a Polish section of this cemetery with the remains of those who died defending this country. Uh, there's a, a Ukrainian section, but we just don't have time to hit it all. Uh, but, man, very sobering to be here and to kind of reflect on uh, the cost of war here in what has now been called the, the Bloodlands in Eastern Europe. Something else.